I'll tell you the three things that I'm the most excited by. The first is sensor networks. I'm extremely excited about that. The second is uh, actually this push towards automated transportation. And the third is around a very specific application of big data. So the first example, um, what we're seeing now is sensors everywhere. And before, what sensors were, were people thought, oh, is that an RFID chip, whatever? No, it's your phone, which has like 19 different things that could it be measuring at any given time. It's clothing that you're wearing. It's, you know, a Nike fuel band, a Fitbit, whatever. But the point is, the number of physical sensors are just exploding in scale. They're in the roads, they're in the air, they're on your body, they're in the phone, what have you. And as that happens, what we're going to see are extremely explicit ways of improving one's quality of life, one's economic output, uh, in really tangible and simple ways. So I'll give you a, a very simple example. Um, there's a great little company that's built a sensor that sits on top of an asthma inhaler. So why is that important? Well, there's like 30 or 40 million people that unfortunately have to deal with asthma. And when you think about the cost of asthma as a healthcare problem within the United States alone, it's 40 to $50 billion when you measure all the emergency room visits, et cetera. And well, why are people going to the emergency room? Well, it's because they don't have a fundamental understanding of when they should be using their inhaler proactively. So what does this sensor do? This sensor measures the time and the date of when you used your last inhalation, and then it measures all this environmental data. Where are you? What's the pollen count? Tell me what the weather looks like. And then it starts to build this heuristic model. And then it starts to paint it forward and say, oh my gosh, tomorrow is a bad day. Take a preventative dose. Do this more often. Don't do that. What happens? You don't have these massive attacks. The point is, these sensor networks will drive tremendous value and efficiency for people. And I think we're not yet ready to really understand the totality of that impact. But um, it's going to touch every facet of our lives. So that's one area that I'm extremely excited about. The second is really what Google is pioneering in the autonomous vehicle space. It is probably the one thing that I've seen that has the ability to fundamentally have the high order bit effect on GDP. Because you're talking about, a f you can completely re-envision cities, transportation models, and commerce. With all these autonomous vehicles, you know, the ability to ship goods. So you can imagine a fleet of small electric cars that deliver all mail, a fleet of drones that drops off parcels from Amazon, Walmart, and Target right to your doorstep, a fleet of trucks that don't cause traffic and congestion, a an entire fleet of city vehicles that are paid and bought for by a state or by a city that provide public transportation in a predictable way. All these things have massive impacts to commerce and the mobility of individuals. And I think it's not well understood. And then the last idea is that um, the one, you know, big data is kind of like this, again, a stupid buzzword, like growth hacking, frankly, um, where you're really talking about just creating more noise and not enough signal. Um, but in the specific case of genetics, what I think we are doing is we're making an extremely important shift, which is shifting the burden away from biologists to computer scientists. Because when you sequence an entire genome, what you're really doing is splitting out, is spitting out a four to five gig flat file of codes, which can be interpreted, where you can build machine learning, supervised or not, to intuit things, to make connections, to find correlations, to hopefully find causality. And across a broad population of people, you have the ability to use computer science to solve some of the most intricate problems of biology and life. And so I suspect in the next 10 to 15 years, you're going to see these massive advances there where it will literally be a group of computer scientists who basically say, if you express the BRCA1 breast cancer gene, here's the protocol that we've seen across a wide population of women that actually prevent the onset of breast cancer. Amazing.